So in the previous lecture, we uh, gave a convenient, we gave a criterion for a metric space of when a metric space is compact. So this lecture, we will begin with a lemma which is very useful and it is called the Lebig number lemma. But before that, we need uh, some preliminaries. So, let x be a metric space. z containing x be a subset okay so given the subset z we can define so we define a function dz from x to r by dz of x is defined to be infimum z in z distance of x from z right so what does this mean so this is our x and this is my z let's say so this is x so we take the distance of x from all points in z and take the infimum right so the infimum may or may not be attained at a point for instance if we take the real line and we take the open interval 0 1 we take this to be z right and we take x to be minus 1 right so then the infimum so the distance between d of x comma a is equal to a plus 1 right if a is a point here then this distance is a plus 1 so the infimum is never attained because so the infimum i'm sorry so i should write like this So the infimum is 1, but it is not attained for any a in the subset z, right? So the infimum may or may not be attained. So this is a function which we define on x. Next, let us check that this is continuous. So we claim that dz is a continuous function. So for this, note that if distance between x and y is strictly less than delta, then for any z in z, we have uh, the distance of x from z is less than equal to x and y, y and z, which is strictly less than delta plus distance of y from z. Right. So when we take infimum, this implies taking infimum, we get dz of x is less than equal to delta plus dz of y, which implies uh, dz x minus dz y is less than equal to delta, right? So similarly, replacing, switching the roles of x and y, x and y, we get dz 
y minus d z x is less than or equal to delta which implies the absolute value of d z x minus d z y is less than or equal to delta. Right. So, thus uh, uh, for any epsilon epsilon positive we let delta to be equal to epsilon by 2 right. So, then d of x comma y is less than or equal to delta will imply that d z okay, is let us say strictly less than although that is not very important d z x minus d z y is strictly less than itself. Okay. So, this shows that d z is continuous. Okay. So, using this distance function, let us prove this Lebesgue number lemma. So, let x be a compact metric space. Suppose we have given an open cover u i s. Okay. So, then there exists delta positive such that for every for any for every x p delta x is contained in u i for some i. Okay. So, now this is something which we have already proved uh, while we are proving our previous theorem uh, because since x is compact uh, every sequence has a convergent subsequence and this is precisely the claim 1 which we proved in the pre while we were proving the previous theorem. However, using the this distance function we let us see a clean proof of this nice proof of this. So, proof. So, as x is compact, there is a finite subcover. Uh, and we may assume x is equal to union i equal to 1 to n u i's. Okay. So, let c i be x minus u i. These are closed subspaces of X. So, define uh, a function f from X to reals greater than or equal to 0 by f of X is defined to be summation i equal to 1 to n d c i of x. So, given any point x, uh, we take the distance of x from each c i and we just add all these. Okay. So, uh, then f is continuous as all uh, the d c i are continuous. Right? We are simply taking a finite sum of continuous functions and that is going to be continuous. Okay? So, so, if this function takes the value 0, then we have summation d c i of x 
is equal to 0. Yeah. But each of these dCi's is uh, greater than or equal to 0, this implies dCi x is equal to 0 for all i. Right. Uh, but what does that mean? So, note that recall that dCi x is equal to infimum of z in c i distance of x from z right and this is equal to 0 ok. So, this implies that there is a sequence z n in c i such that the distance of x from z n is tending to 0 ok. But this implies that z n is converging to x right. However, we also know that c i's are closed right as c i is closed in x this implies that x belongs to c i which implies that the distance of c ok this implies that x belongs to c i that is all that we need sorry for all i right. Uh, this implies that x belongs to intersection of c i right. however intersection of c i is equal to intersection of x minus u i which is equal to x minus union u i but this is the empty set as the union is equal to x right. So, thus we get a contradiction. Right. So, thus f of x is always positive right uh, ok. So, as x is compact this implies uh, f of x is compact this implies f of x is closed uh, in R and as 0 does not belong to f of x. So, since f of x is closed and 0 is not in is in the complement of f of x which is open this means there is a neighborhood 0 delta of delta neighborhood of 0 which does not meet f of x this implies that f of x is greater than or equal to delta for all x and x right. So, this implies that the summation i equal to 1 to n d c i x is greater than or equal to delta for all x and x right. So, this implies that uh, d c i x is greater than or equal to delta by n for at least 1 i right because if it was strictly less than delta by n for all i that would mean that the sum would be strictly less than delta ok. Uh, but this the right. So, what does this mean? So, we have our c i is this and our x is this. So, distance of x from c i is greater than or equal to. So, this distance is greater than or equal to delta by n right, but then the complement of c i is u i. So, this implies that uh, d delta by n x is contained in u i right. So, this proves the limit. So, we will end this lecture here.